Sequence field, why you probably shouldn't use it, but I'll show you how if you need to. First, what is a sequence field? A sequence field is a field that creates oftentimes an integer that is automatically incremented every time it's invoked. So if you create a document and it's document one, then that index is moved to document two and the next time you create a document and three, four, and five. And so you have a very specific and ordered sequence of uh, numbers that show up in your documents. Uh, useful for some circumstances, uh, but we're gonna first go through why you probably should avoid them if you can. Um, and the, probably the biggest reason why you don't want to use an indexed sequence field is that it doesn't scale very well. The, the MongoDB method of storing documents is very distributed, which is one of its selling points. I mean, the whole idea is that you can make a massive collection of documents that scales extremely well. Uh, this is why really large systems like Google and Amazon and Facebook use distributed NoSQL servers like MongoDB. Uh, it's because it scales so well. Uh, as soon as you use an indexed sequence field, you've just removed a lot of that scalability because every time you add a document, there has to be some, philosophically, some source or some place for the knowledge of what numbers have been used so far has to be stored. And that becomes a single point of failure, which actually comes into the next problem. Um, it also becomes a traffic choke point. So every time you add a new document that has a sequence field in it, it will have to lock that one document that's keeping track of the current number, update it, and then release it. So if you have multiple documents created at the same time, say from a really busy website, they'll all get in queue and each of those things will be processed one at a time. In other words, it can't do the huge scaling that you would expect out of MongoDB. So if you have a small website, maybe it's not a big deal. Or if you have an application where you're using the sequence field very rarely, maybe it's not such a big deal. Uh, but do keep those things in mind. You don't want to become dependent on a sequence field on a project you suspect may get to be really big one day. Um, you got single point of failure, so if that index document gets deleted, you've lost your ability to keep indexing the fields, and in fact, you probably start getting duplicate indexes. Um, so you'd have to recreate and fix the system after the fact, and that can get somewhat complicated. Um, and then the third problem is that it does, and this is a minor thing, but it has been pointed out in various forums and the like, it also provides a little bit of information disclosure you don't, wouldn't necessarily want to give out. For example, if you had a list of users uh, using your system, um, if the user were to figure out what their index field is or their ID field is, they could probably guess the number of customers you have, and it's frankly none of their business, most likely. Um, it's a guess because uh, things like, for example, PostGrey, they tend to do their index fields you know, in batches, so you're not, you're not always giving away all the information. And you're not really giving away the number of users you have, you're just giving away the current index number. You know, it doesn't count people that left, and it doesn't count um, changes in the indexing system. So it's, you know, I, I think this is a more minor issue, but it's there. I just bring it up. Now, do you need a sequence field is a common question. Uh, first off, if you're just looking for uniqueness, we already have that in MongoDB, and that's the object ID field. Those object IDs are unique. And in fact, if the clusters are set up correctly, and certainly if you're just running off a single server, it is pretty much guaranteed to be unique. Um, even if a badly clustered server where you'll have multiple machines with the same hash ID, even then, the odds of you having a duplicate are extremely unlikely. Not impossible, so I, that's why I put it on this slide here. <laughs> it is possible, but it's extremely rare, even if it's badly configured. But again, if it's configured correctly, no problem. They are unique. Um, the other reason people might want a sequence field is for order. Now, the one possible workaround for that is to simply give a timestamp to your documents so that you know exactly when they were created. Um, and in fact, uh, in Mongo Engine, you can set a default value to equal to date time dot date time dot now, and it'll use the current time of when that document was created and save it right into your document so you can sort by the time of creation. 
Um, now, if you say, well, what if two people are updating the same, say, message or document at the exact same second and millisecond? Well, that's possible in a high enough volume system. If you need one document to for sure follow another document, you can also use a generation number, which is very similar to an index number, but it's not guaranteed to be unique. So, for example, if you've got document one, and it's got a generation number of 23, just an integer field, just call it a generation number, and you want to create the next document, you want to make sure that it's after 23, you just take that 23 and increment it in a new document and call it 24. Now, there might be multiple 24s created, but they'll all be after 23. You see what I'm quite saying there. So using a mix of generations and numbers and timestamps, um, you might get what you're needing for with, uh, if you're wanting an order for the documents. And if you read all this and you say, you know what, I still need a sequence field. Well then, let's get started. Just like in the previous video, we're going to start off with our famous quote document. And right now it's just got a text field in there. And let's go ahead and add in a single uh, sequence field. So index equals me dot uh, sequence field. That right there will create an integer sequence field because that's the default. Um, let's go ahead and try it out. We're going to do much of our work uh, interactively today. So we run it and we'll do more from the uh, prompt here. So let's create a uh, famous quote. Text flows. Um, okay, we got a famous quote created. Let's go ahead and save our work. All right, and let's see what the index is. FQ dot index, and it's a one. And if I do this very thing again, I created a create another famous quote. And now we have a two. And so this keeps going. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what it's doing behind the scenes. So here we have our Mongo engine counters, and here we have our famous quote. Uh, Mongo Engine Counters, that's the collection that was automatically created by using the sequence field. Uh, MongoDB itself doesn't actually support the sequence field uh, underneath, so don't go looking at the MongoDB documentation looking for that particular data type. It is simply an integer field by default, uh, at least with Mongo Engine, and Mongo Engine's doing this. That's why it's labeled a Mongo Engine collection. So MongoEngine.Counters is the collection used by Mongo Engine to keep track of all those counters. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Um, here we see one document for the famous quote class dot and then the field name index. And that's how it keeps track of the counters. And in here, of course, is the ID. And then here's the current number that it's sitting on. Um, this is a single document for this class, and that's where the current counter is kept. And that's also why this can become a, uh, a slowdown on a high volume system, because in order to increment that counter, uh, the Mongo engine locks the document to do an atomic update to ensure that if it creates, it increments it to three, that it's the only increment to three, that it's not incremented to three twice. So it has to lock the document as a whole. So if another insertion is occurring at the same time, it has to wait its turn. It, the first insertion has to occur, then the second one. And so you end up with a long queue waiting on this one document and it can become a point of contention for the system. Again, only really a problem if it's very high volume that you're working with, um, or if you're doing, say, a mass insertion, you want to insert 50,000 records. Well, instead of it taking, you know, just a couple minutes like it would without a sequence field, you might be waiting a couple hours because it's got to, one at a time, lock this document, update it, unlock it, and then go on to the next insertion. Um, it, it can slow things down. Let's go ahead and take a look at the famous quote collection and where here's our two documents there's the index of one and the index of two let's play around with this a little bit there are some extra functions available to us uh, in the form of parameters so if i don't want it to be an integer i can actually create a value decorator and i could for example make it a string Essentially, I can pass in any callable of any kind, like a, in this case, a type, or I can pass in a, a function that I write, and it will 
pass in as a parameter that integer, and then you can do whatever with that integer you want to. Um, in fact, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do that. Let's do some fun. Let's do um, I don't know uh, exclaim. Of course, that function doesn't exist yet. Let's go ahead and make it exclaim. And of course, we're going to pass in the number. And let's return. It's a and put a number and some exclamation points. There we go. Now it will return a string, and so our index will become a string field. Um, nothing else will change. It'll still do the same increment you're seeing in the uh, uh, Mongo Engine dot counters collection. Um, let's go ahead and run it and play with this. Okay, so famous quote. Save the document, and now when I look at the index, it will say it's a three. Now, what you return here from your callable, in this case a function, um, it will attempt to interpret it on the fly. So I could, for example, have an if statement there where on odd numbers it returns an integer and on even numbers it returns a string. Or maybe on numbers that are divisible by nine, it will return a uh, floating point number. And Mongo Engine will do its best job to reinterpret what you mean by that and turn it into a, a proper dynamic field. Uh, I don't know that why you would want to do that, but <laughs> there it is. It's an option. Okay, and one last trick, and this is kind of interesting. Let's say you've got two, in fact, let's go ahead and make two documents here. We've got a famous quote, but we also want some unfamous quotes. And let's say you don't want, let's go ahead and uh, take this out. You don't want unfamous quote to have its own index. You want it to be tied into the famous quote index. There's a way to do that. You can use the sequence name parameter. Let me show you how that works. Now it's using unfamous quote is using the famous quote dot index key in the Mongo engine dot counter collection to do its sequences. So unfamous quote will use the exact same counter. And so if I do this, uh, unfamous quote equals index, it should come back with a four. Ah, I didn't though. What did I do wrong? I, I figured it out. Um, you don't put the, uh, the field name in there. If it's index, it pulls the field name from, field name from here. So it's, you just put in famous quote. It's the prefix that you put in. I figured that out when I looked at the, uh, the, uh, the collection and I see index.index. .index. Yeah, in fact, let me go ahead and wipe that out. There we go. So now it should work. Let's try it. Okay. All right. Blah, blah, four. <laughs> UFQ save. Uf, Ufq index. It should come back as four. Yes, came back as four. So now they're sharing the same counter. And so now between those two collections, they will never share an index field value. So there's our exploration of the sequence field. If you like what you see in this tutorial, please subscribe. Thanks.